everybody this is Jay Bella Beauty and welcome back to my channel I know once again it's been a long periodically time wait a long periodically time but we're back and the main reason why it took me so long was because my hair was not done and I was not coming up here looking right I just uh -uh, I'm not doing it but that's okay though because as you can tell my hair is done I got a new backdrop thanks to my mom like everything is on the up and up right so if you can't tell by this video you guys or by the title um, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step of how I make my wig unit and I didn't get as many clips as I would have liked to about my whole process so I'm gonna try to like talk through this as much as I can but I'm gonna get us through this I promise you so if you're watching this that means that you probably already got some bundles so it's no secret the bundles of my choice were probably by the Ash Lene collection and today I'm gonna be using the straight bundles I think my longest bundle was 28 my shortest was 20 so work that math out I forgot what everything else in between was um, and this time as you can see I decided to go with a 7 by 7 closure so when you're choosing a closure or a frontal um, just be aware of what type of things you're into I wanted something that was really realistic but not quite a frontal which is why I went by with the 7 by 7 frontals are just not for me I, I just I don't, I'm not feeling it but the regular old closures, the part is just too short for what I like. Now, if this is your first wig, I would just go ahead and use a regular closure. But that's just something for you to think about. That's another video for another day. Once you get your bundles, the first step is to actually go ahead and bleach the knots on the closure. We're not bleaching the roots. We are just bleaching the knots. Your closure or your frontal is going to come with these black dots all over it. So we want to actually bleach those and lift those to a more realistic looking color that's going to probably um, mesh well with the skin once it hits your scalp or once it hits the wig cap. What I normally use, and I'll insert an old video um, oh Lord. again in here of me doing this because nothing really about my not bleaching um, routine has changed. The only thing I did do different this time was I used a plastic butter knife. Um, and that actually did help. I was able to spread it a lot better. And I left it on for a full 30 minutes. Um, sometimes I'll leave it on shorter. This time it actually lifted exactly to where I needed to be. So other than that though, the process was still the same. I used one scoop of white bleach and another scoop of purple bleach. The white bleach like BW2 is normally like really strong. Um, purple or blue bleach is normally not as strong but it tones so that's why I mixed the two together and it was able to give me this beautiful um, kind of brassy brown color that I wanted after that I actually got a bowl filled it with water it didn't even have to be hot and I put my purple shampoo um, use shimmer lights purple purple shampoo in the water and I dipped the closure into it and just let it sit for 15 minutes the remaining um, residue of the brassiness in your closure you don't want that brassy color in it. nobody's freaking scalp is that color oh hell no or that red so yeah we're gonna get rid of that with um with the purple shampoo and once you've done that it's time to move on to your bundles here's a quick tip i will never do this again um i don't know why i did this actually i know why but whatever um i like to make my wig and then dye my bundle the first step to dyeing your hair is you're going to have to bleach it. Um, your bleach, make sure you kind of want it to be um, kind of loose. Um, the more developer that you add to the mixture, the more powerful the mixture is. I didn't need this mixture to be that powerful because I knew I was only going to a brown. I used a white powder versus a purple or a blue powder because I knew that white was going to be a lot stronger. And I wasn't really worried about it being brassy because it's just going to be brown anyway. Now had I been going for like blonde or a crazy like pink or something like that, then I would have probably used blue powder. But because this is brown, whatever. Um, I ended up using the Wella um, Color Charm Powder and I used a 30 volume developer. So I only needed to lift this hair to like a level 5 or 6 and then I was ready to actually color. Every color comes with its own, or every brand of color, I should say, comes with its own different set of directions. So a big piece of this is you can't just dump things into a bowl and mix it and expect the color to come out what you want the sw or what you saw the swatch to come out, I should say. It's not going to work like that. You have to follow the directions. So the color that I used originally was the Clairol True Color, and I used the color in Smoky Brown. 
um, the mixing ratio was one to two, I believe. So I'm gonna explain what mixing ratio is. The first number in the mixing ratio is the ounces of the actual color. So that's how many ounces are in that tube of color that you're using. The second number is the ounces of developer that go with it. So my mixing ratio was one to two. The amount of ounces that were in my tube of color were two. So therefore I needed to double the amount of developer. So I need four, yeah, I needed four ounces of developer in my um, mixture in order to get this mixture right. I noticed a lot of people did not know that and that's why their hair color really never came out because they weren't paying attention to the direction. So it's a big deal. I probably will not be um, dyeing my bundles first and then making the wig. I probably will make the wig and then dye the bundles because I'm just not a fan of having to unravel the bundles and do, that was too much work for me and it actually caused me not unraveling the bundles caused me to have to do more work. So if you are going to dye your bundles before you make the wig, unravel the bundles, make sure that you get you uh, make sure you get yourself a nice clear space to work on and unravel them and bleach them because you will have to bleach them again and again and again and again and dye them again and again and again and again and nobody has time for that. So if you're still on this video that means it is time for us to actually make our wig. The key to making these wigs perfect is actually having like a pretty good foundation and somewhere to really work. If you're trying to hold the mannequin head in between your legs it's going to be a mess. Um, that's actually how I started out doing mine. The first time I made a wig, actually my sister had me make mine. And she had me hot glue it so that I could get the rhythm of um, where the track should go. And then she had me sew it the second time that I made the wig. And when I tell you it took me 24 hours to sew it, it took me 24 hours. So um, don't get discouraged. This takes practice and this takes plenty of time. This is not something that's easy to do. So if you're watching me sew, um, I pretty much just sew in a back and forth motion when it comes to the tracks. I lay one over top of the other. It was nothing really special up until I got to the top. And let me just stop right here. So let's talk about the type of cap that we're using. So you can use, there's so many different type of caps that you've used. I've either used a spandex dome cap or I've used the adjustable band cap. And that's the ones that I'm pretty much feeling right now, the adjustable band caps. If you're using the spandex dome cap, you're gonna feel a thick elastic band along the rim of the cap. You don't wanna puncture your needle through that cap. You wanna puncture through just the fabric. If you feel your needle going through that thick band, you are about to completely destroy your entire wig. So that's just a heads up for those of you guys that are using that mesh dome cap. But anyways, back to the sewing. Um, like I said, I just go back and forth layering them one on top of the other. There was no special direction up until I got to the closure. And this really, really applies whether you're using a frontal or a closure. Um, closures kind of come in more of a U shape. I think frontals come in more of a smile. Once you get to the top, you want to start laying your tracks perfectly around that U or that half a smile. Once you get to the top, you want to start layering your tracks perfectly around that U. And basically, you want to make your tracks and sew them in the shape of a U or you want to sew them in the shape of a smile if you are, um, or upside down smile if you're doing a frontal. That's what's really going to get your tracks to lay flat. Once you sew the closure down, and I usually sew one bundle and then I'll move go back and sew down the closure of the frontal. Um, when I'm sewing the closure down, I bring the closure, and you know the closure already has the lace on it still. I haven't cut the lace or anything. So I bring that closure an inch past where the cap, um, where the rim of the cap is. And that's where I sew it at. If you sew that closure or that frontal right at the edge of that cap, it's not really gonna lay and look as natural as it can. So that's something, you know, to just think about. Like I said, guys, this is something that takes practice. Once we've got that done, um, it was time for me to move on to customizing the hairline, which was plucking. This is what ultimately, in my opinion, will make or break the wig. I have had some horror stories behind my own plucking experiences, guys. So don't be discouraged if, you know, things don't come out the way that you want to. Um, Take note of it and work on it. And I promise you every single wig that you do, once you take mental note of it, you'll really, really start to pick it up. And this time I felt like I picked it up. Before, I used to grab the hair and pull down in a downward motion. 
This time, I pulled the hair back and went in a backwards motion. That gave me more control over how much hair I was pulling off. I was pulling forward, it felt like I was pulling way too much off and I was balding it way too fast. The deal with this wig was, I knew I was gonna be wearing this wig on a more everyday basis, so I didn't wanna bald out the closure that much. I wanted to still keep it kind of full, but I just wanted to make the hairline look a little bit more realistic. And I believe that this closure did come like a little bit pre-plucked, but I still just wanted it a little bit more customized. Um, I didn't do baby hairs in this because I do have like the blonde patches in the front. So um, I'm just not a fan of like colored baby hairs for that reason. So if it was black, I probably would have did it. But um, because it's not a black wig, no. <sighs> so yeah, um, another important key is to wet the frontal as you go along. And I also stick my fingers um, under the lace so that I can get a little bit more of a realistic idea of what it's gonna look like once it hits my skin so this helps me know where I want the frontal or the closure to be more bald or where I want it to be more full and it's important to not keep plucking um, consistently in the same spot because that will really really get you to bald it out um, and be you know giving your free closure alopecia real quick parse it out Go everywhere, be random about it. You literally don't have to have any uniform about this. Just go in random places. And that was really how I felt like I got mine to come out so first. I used to cut my lace with the scissors, um, with cutting shears, and I thought like I was hot stuff because I was using cutting shears. No, I actually um, went back and tried cutting my lace with an eyebrow razor, and I love that way better. The eyebrow razor is like more of a jagged razor than the, um, the shear is more of like a straight cut. So it's just hard for me to try to cut. You don't want to cut the line straight across. That looks so unrealistic once it hits your skin. You want it to be kind of jagged and it's just harder for me to do that um, on my own. The eyebrow razor just did it for me. Now I did go back and highlight some pieces in the front. Once I got done with the wig and I was eyeballing it, I just thought it was kind of boring. Um, so I kind of had a different vision in mind for it once I got finished and which is why I went in and highlighted some pieces. If you want a video on the highlighting, um, please just let me know. I just decided not to film that because that wasn't originally planned, um, but it was really, really simple. So if you guys want a video of me um, doing some highlights, don't shoot me. Just tell me, I promise I will do it. So as far as the specs on this hair, guys, like I said, this hair is from the Ashlyn A Hair Collection, y'all. Um, she is based in LA, but she has the best customer service, hands down. Um, anytime that I have a problem with something, she's so easy to communicate, and a lot of times when I tell her I don't like something about one batch of hair, when I'm ready to order my next batch of hair, she pretty much works on it. I was a little nervous when I did first get the hair because um, the bundles were a little thin, but once I started to do the wig, I was like, yeah, this is a lot of hair. This is actually too much. I ended up having to like double the wefts as I was um, sewing because it was just so much hair um, paired with the closure. She definitely did work on that issue that I was having that the bundles were um, not as thick as I wanted them to be. As far as the ends of the hair, 10 out of 10. They were absolutely beautiful. Um, I have not experienced any shedding. Even after the processing, I have not experienced any shedding. I'm such a straight hair fan, uh, so it's really hard to, for me to not be biased with straight hair, but this is probably my favorite texture that I've used from her. I definitely will be ordering this texture way more often than anything else and just coloring it and doing different things to it. Um, I haven't tried to curl it yet, um, and I'm not really someone that likes uh, curls. Um, I like straight hair. Probably in my six month update, I will tell you guys how it held a curl. But for now, um, it's great. Uh, I've gotten nothing but compliments. Uh, you guys literally blew me up on Instagram about how beautiful this color came out. Um, she is really full. Like, this hair is really, 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 really full, guys. Um, the knots on this closure bleached a lot better than the other closures or frontals that I've had from her. I will say that. I'll give that a 10 out of 10. I did not have to go back and bleach it again. Um, and maybe that has something to do with me leaving it on a little bit longer. But yeah, this closure, like, it bleached so well. 
Um, like I said, the frontal did come pre-plugged. So if you aren't someone that is 100% interested in plugging your closure, um, this one might be a good idea for you just because um, you really don't have to do it if you don't want to. The hair took the bleach very well. And this is probably my second time bleaching hair from her and I wasn't really too much short of surprise. Um, the last set of hair that I bleached from her did great. This hair did great. So I wasn't too shocked about that. I'm really happy with the way that it bleached. It literally, the bleach stayed on in 15 minutes and it was up to like a level five or six. That was really, really good. I didn't have to stay, you know, doing this all night. The hair is definitely true to length. I do feel like her hair is longer than what, you know, she said it was. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I'm not complaining about that. I'm 5'5". Five five. This hair is waist length for me at 28 inches. I haven't experienced that much tangling. I do experience a little bit of tangling. Something I knew was going to happen because I did double the wefts. So, it's not that big of a deal. And it's really not anything noticeable. Nobody can see it except me or know that it tangled up in the nape. And when you have long hair, it is more prone to tangling like up in here, especially when it's hot outside. So that's just something to be expected of anyway. So I will probably come back somewhere along the next like few months and update you guys on this hair. But right now I have no complaints. I will leave her link in my bio to her Instagram and to her new website. So you guys can go ahead and place an order with her. Um, you guys can stalk her Instagram, blow it up, make sure that you place an order with her. This hair is super affordable, guys. For the quality and the price, I mean, for the quality and the price, I'm really not complaining. This hair is, like, beautiful. I'm really, really excited about that. All right, you guys, so we are closing this video out. Thank you so much for all the love, all of the support, and I will catch you all in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.